Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? My name is Kyle, you know me as Dragonmar, and welcome to a new video. Today we have a Diamond 1 VOD review submitted by fellow YouTuber, fellow streamer, the king live so king has come to us for some help and all this was done on stream so it's all live kind of like a live coaching slash of interview session a lot of back and forth it was a lot of fun to do and uh i hope you guys enjoy it a little different than what we normally do for vods so let me know what you think and uh let's start the video hey king hello, hello? how's it going hey it's going good how are you i'm pretty good awesome so i hear you know potentially you have a vod I do actually. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, I wanted to send something in. I figured you hit a mortal. I've been pretty hard stuck diamond. I, there was something that you said earlier that resonated with me on your stream. You said that the only thing that helped you gain consistency was playing more. And I really don't play all that much. Yeah, <laughs> I, I play. I play like a little bit every single day, but uh, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep it steady just so I can keep my enjoyment up with the game, which I think is the, the, my priority, I guess, right now. But um. I figured, yeah, it, it can't hurt to try to learn some more, you know, so I figured who's the best VOD review guy on YouTube? I figured I hit you up, you know? Yeah, hey, listen, woo, I compliments. I appreciate that. Oh my God, the light looks full. I'd say myself, but I don't really do the VOD reviews as much. I like to fro focus more on the- All right, so Icebox, tell me, tell me a little about how you like to play Icebox. Um, so my thing is that people are very inexperienced on icebox so that this is actually why i, I mentioned at the beginning of the bot i hate icebox uh, it's not yeah. that i hate the map itself it's that i hate how inexperienced everyone is and how frustrated they all get on it um so i have a couple of like pocket strats that i just like to run they're just basically defaults that work pretty well this is one of my favorite ones for pistol round uh generally the middle of the map seems pretty undefended so you like like there's one person playing right here normally and you can yep. kind of take advantage of it I'm going to scuff a TP here. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the the quick rush through mid definitely um, is something that can work. Now, unfortunately, if you were playing me, that's actually where I play. So I'm generally there to fight that. But yeah, that works really well, especially when the enemy team is not prepared. And I, and I totally agree with you in the sense that a lot of people just do not know how to play this map, right? They, they don't know where to play. Um, they don't have strats figured out and you can really take advantage of middle here. So a nice job with that. But then unfortunately, looks like you go for a sort of an aggressive push over here, right? Over towards yeah. um, back lane, I guess, towards B. And you end up fighting two guys here. What I would say here is that I feel like a little bit too much aggression. You could take these fights, but if you're gonna take these fights, I'd take it back from the corner here and not fully swing like this. Like I'd stop right there, right? And kind of wait for them. Unfortunately, when you turn this corner, you don't really have vision except for of the cypher on the mini map. So, you know, you keep coming and then there's boom, there's two of them. A little unfortunate in that situation, but the strat, the strat you ran was great, I thought. Yeah. That's actually a really good point too. Cause um, I think me pushing up there was intended to catch them off guard, but I'm already probably going to catch them off guard at that corner anyway. And I'm going to be a lot safer mm -hmm. right there. So that, that's yeah, really so here it looks point. like we go for uh, a take on A. Seems like you guys take sight pretty well, actually. Oh yeah, no! I, something I wanna something I wanna point out here because I know that you watch your vods in like pretty low volume. Um, yeah, I, I am. I'm definitely more of an IGL as a player. I'm not really a hard fragger normally, but I am calling like all of the strats this game. So I do think there's something to be said there. For people who are like, man, this guy's garbage. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Tell me. Yeah. I definitely have to keep it low or else I just lose my mind. Oh, yeah, that's, that's totally fair. And but, I'm sure like there's lots of people being vulgar all the time and like Valorant. <laughs> yeah. But you, yeah, definitely tell me the strats you're calling and stuff. I can kind of hear it a little bit, but yeah, I love this play, by the way. I love getting up here as Omen. Um, such a good spot. Why, why particularly on Omen? What do you what do you do up on pipes that's like really? <clears throat> oh, just because people? like being able to get up there and then it kind of gives you this vision of the top of everything. Then you can play off the top of your smokes too, right? So you can smoke down low, force the people who are down there to like have to look around it and, and, and get above them by using different types of teleports and stuff. Um, I just, I love the high ground part of this uh, part of the map. Yeah, definitely. I think that there's this big like fear that like, Oh, I don't know how to play the map. I'm just going to lose all my games. But like, that's the perfect time to do it when no one else knows either. And the longer people wait to play the map, like the worst off it's going to be when you go into it for the first time, like, cause now everybody knows how to play it except for you. So yeah, I think the whole dodging icebox all the time mentality is, uh, it's just going to hurt people in the long run. Okay, so this round particularly right there, uh, I was calling the push through mid. I tried to turn around to watch that flank. I, I do feel like some of these kills, it, 
is my crosshair placement really poor or like what's going on i feel like i should be winning more engagements than i do so like when i swung that omen right there i i i, I was not the one who got the kill it was the it was the guy who's second to me like mm -hmm. not right there it's just before this oh it's just before this okay yeah, yeah. So i'm gonna yeah. say yeah you get a nice i mean that was a nice shot on that guy I mean, we, we end up killing him anyway, but I should definitely be the one to kill him there, I feel like. And, like, the jet ends up picking it up, too. Which is well, good, because we swung it together, but... The jet kind of ran into you, too. Maybe maybe that affected it. Um, what I can say here is you're going really, really fast around this corner. And, you know, this guy, the omen, is also walking. And as you can see, you've already shot a few bullets. None have hit, right? You're two bullets down right now. You're aiming at his chest. You know, I think maybe the jet just hits the headshot before you. I can't tell with the recoil where you're going to go, but it looked it looked decent. Uh, it could have just been the movement that threw you off there and maybe the jet running into um, you as well. So right here, one thing I would say, just a note, is if you can smoke, uh, you know, snowman back here, this, this like gap, I think that's a really, really good smoke when you're taking this site. Um, it looks like your first smoke was used up top. Now, what, what is the purpose of this smoke right here? Um, it's kind of to block off yellow, I think was my goal here. Uh, I was, uh, oh, like, I was also talking about this. I was kind of worried this was going to be a one way, like against us as well, but, um, he kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> but Hey, nonetheless, um, th generally what I would do is I would throw a smoke for the plant and then I would throw a smoke, uh, back there by snow to block that guy off there that you just headshot very nicely. So you don't have a problem with that smoke on plant. I was kind of worried about this one um i do i mean I, the the problem here is that you know you're smoking in the right area it's just maybe not quite the right position for it um the problem with this spot is that people are going to learn that this box is extremely spammable and people generally plant right next to it um so what you could do in the future is try to put this smoke more against the uh the the site box and not these like double green boxes here that way it covers more into sight it can obstruct more okay, vision so you know a player probably back site i think that was the jet with her ult oh, I'm so bad, <laughs> hey uh, okay. she died in the end you know that's really what matters in this situation but she did and it's fights like that that look really bad but i actually don't feel too bad at because she she dashed right there like that would have been a hard flick i'm a very low sense player too yeah. Uh, so for me to like for me to do those sorts of sweeps that it, it does take a lot of my mouse pad or last and, anyway. And did you realize when she killed your jet, like exactly where she was from the path of that knife? You I knew, knew she, she was, was back corner sight, like around the smoke. I figured she could have been in the smoke, but generally when you see weird smokes like that, I feel like you can kind of like strafe around them. Um yeah. that's kind of what I went for there. Is that like too risky, you think? Or no, I, I don't in a four V two with an ulted jet, um, had she stayed there, it's, you know, she probably right clicks you and kills you. So I think you're actually fortunate she dashes. All I would say though, is that after she right clicks your Phoenix, you know, there is that time where she has to reset for her next right click. You maybe could have tried to reset the recoil potentially uh, after she like, it's such a hard, it's so hard to look at and be like, mm, do you, you know, do you keep going for the spray here? <sighs> yeah. No, I, I, think, I think you're entirely right here too though like so something that i i really watch when i or i really see when i watch players like hiko is he yeah. um I, and i think i've heard him say this too he makes every bullet count like he's he's very like he does little bursts and like he just aims for the headshot because that's all you need and when i come yeah. back to like a full sprayer like that it's probably just better for me to pick up my mouse even and like just just like take my time yeah because i definitely did have time right there definitely i also yeah. had another teammate right there too so it, it was really no panic there actually it's like i wonder mm -hmm. if i could have done something more you know yeah, definitely. And right here, one thing I would say about this um, swing, did you ex did you know a uh, player could be no. close to you? I knew that I knew the jet was far. I did not account for the omen here. Yeah, because you know, whenever I see a paranoia come out, I'm always worried about the position of the player using it to how close an enemy could be. Like in this situation, obviously the omen can see you. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was thinking if you knew he was there, maybe maybe backing or strafing a little bit differently to make sure he can't see you still could have been useful. Also, I noticed you you seem to be a little bit aggressive. Is that fair to say? Or, or is it because you take IGL that you feel like you have to lead as well as the first person in? I noticed that I am almost always the first person in a matchmaking. Um, that's why I, for a while I tried to play duelists, but um, and uh, I uh, similarly... In one of your more recent videos that I watched, um, you were talking about how a lot of people who are IGLs like try try they try to play duelists and it's just not like a fitting role for them. That's kind of yeah. what I realized is that I'm um I do a lot better on characters that I can use their utility to get me kills rather than like uh, so like play, uh, characters like 
I can use their utility intelligently and it like really benefits me. So like Killjoy, you can play off her turret and if you have like really good setups, you can really utilize it. Um, oh, yeah. Or like Cypher, or like your trap setups and stuff. Uh, the, these feel like characters that really benefit me a lot mm -hmm. and I'm able to like make a lot of use or get a lot of value out of them. Or like characters like Phoenix, I'm just not a, I'm not a fragger. So it's like whenever I play Phoenix, I can engage and I'm very good at being a body, but I'm never like, I'm never hard fragging yeah and that makes a lot of sense and and even just even the fact that you like you can recognize that like it's the same for me for the most part like if i'm on my main account like there's like i'm not picking a, i'm not picking a duelist over the guys i play with you know what i mean because i know that's not where i excel i excel you know making calls um staying alive anchoring sites using my smokes and 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 getting that utility to support these guys who all they do is aim right all aim no brain you yeah. know seriously some players are like that and that's fine you got to be there to support them so it's good you recognize that right i mean i think that's, I that's clearly great. i go for that same play i went for on pistol round i actually do land the teleport this time um and it doesn't go well again well, <laughs> what do you think i do better here i see that reina my thought is i just fall back at this point like I'm, i know i'm getting pushed by multiple people like mm -hmm. this is bad uh i pull out the blind and obviously i get caught with the blind up yeah, so the problem here is once again the the multiple levels that you can be shot from. So you don't you don't just have to worry about the bottom. You don't worry about someone coming from the top, and not just on the top. You also have to worry about both sides of this doorway. Is it going to come left? Is it going to come right? Or is it come up top? Where up top is he going to peek from? Am I going to get two v one, one v one? Like, what are my options here? So, so what you're saying right now is the Reina peeks me from the left, and that was the best case scenario for me. <laughs> uh. Honestly, the best case scenario is you play closer and you go for an aggressive fight, and you have a teammate come help you, like your cipher right now could rotate around snow and help you long uh, to fight a guy up top. I think here you have to stay down low. I don't think yeah. you have time to back up. You're, I think you're overestimating the time you had here. And like, as you can see, right? I mean, you see the Reina, maybe four, five seconds go by, and, or maybe like four seconds go by, you're still hanging out and, and then you're dead, right? Could you have turned yeah. around and ran in that time? probably not i think you had maybe a shroud yeah you have a shroud of step but like are you gonna really be able to turn around quick enough to get through that probably not once again right it's one of those yeah. things where you saw one player oh i'm gonna kill him oh another guy appeared on my screen you kind of missed all the shots i think because you were expecting the reina to repeak or to reappear on yeah, your screen i was looking for the reina to repeak and then the omen swung around and i was like oh i lose this <laughs> Yeah, I think that this is one of those situations where you were in a very aggressive position and you just have to commit to that aggression at that point. Falling back yeah. and pulling out the um, the blind here was bad. Just stay up close, fight close range, You know, do your best to win that fight, and then hopefully your Cypher can come assist you or someone else can uh, to get out of there. I'm, should you have a smoke? No, you weren't going to have a smoke, yeah. So I think there you just got to stay and fight. That, that's all I can say to that. I think this is like another thing too. Like, so I think we end up finishing off this half like seven, seven, five, eight, four, or something like that. And it's like that's yeah. a good half, but just the realization that like I did throw one or two rounds this game. Not like entirely. Obviously, it's not all my fault, but it's like I, if I had played better that round, I probably pick up one, maybe two kills right there. Or I yeah. could have anyway. There's potential for that play, and it's all like just accepting responsibility for those sorts of things is uh, helpful, at least uh, for, for myself. For the most part, I genuinely carry uh, with generally carry with comms. And yeah. the problem was when I was getting tilted, I did not want to calm at all. And I even got to the point where I uploaded a video recently. I was talking about how I turned off comms and it made me enjoy the game 10 times more. I, I, I see. Just, I saw that one. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I, I was like, I, oh, okay. I, I know I know you, like, uh, a lot of people probably disagree with it on the sense that obviously comms are an important part of the game and, like, talking to people is a beneficial thing. But if you're not enjoying the game and you turn them off, it does make it a lot easier. I've turned them back on since, obviously, because this is a recent replay um and now that i've like cleared my mental state and i'm able to just like just talk and like uh be able to communicate effectively and i'm like i'm in a, I'm in a good place uh it is definitely been helping me like I, i've been enjoying the game a lot more i've been playing so we're on it. eco here so i called for a push mid uh this goes catastrophically bad uh i don't i, I don't know if there's anything we could have done better it was an eco i guess but um yeah the slow there really messes you up that was a very impactful slow whether the sage realizes it or not just to delay movement but i think they saw the jet early on so maybe that's why they knew we were all there but uh yeah maybe they see her when she's crossing right hold there. on i'm gonna check something huh how often do you smoke mid on rounds where you don't go there? 
Never. So that was also a tell. That's that's also true. Yeah. I would assume that is what gave it away is the fact that probably because you hadn't been establishing mid control with smokes, which generally speaking in every round almost that I play, I smoke mid on this map regardless of where we go. They saw the smoke for the first time. They're like, huh, haven't seen that yet, you know? And then they made a play off of it. I'm assuming yeah, that, that was what fair. lost it probably. Yeah. That was definitely it. We also all jumped down from there. So maybe they heard it too. That's also possible. Uh, I was, uh, the thing that caught me off guard was the amount of spray coming through this. That was like a four man spray or just straight through yeah. the smoke. Uh, there's a lot of, it yeah. is, a, it is an eco. So it's a little bit of a throwaway round, but, uh, yeah, it, it is unfortunate. I think we get two rifles off them too, actually. So it's not terrible, but yeah. And remember any, anything you do on an eco is good. I mean, any gun you take away any gun you keep. Yeah. Always a positive. This is actually uh, right here. Uh, if you have any advice on this. So if you wanted to rewind it, I think you mentioned this in one of your videos recently too. Uh, I'm trying to make a play with this Rainer right here, and the play didn't work out really as uh, what I wanted. I guess I just didn't communicate correctly enough. What I asked her to do is I told her I was going to teleport into this corner. What I wanted the Rainer to do was play right on the box and peek off my contact. Is that just like, a, did I miscommunicate that? I think that's pretty much exactly what I told her. Um, because she didn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, this is the yeah. problem with Star Look You is that it's hard to coordinate tactics like this sometimes because like people just like don't understand like it, when you like with a group of friends it's a lot easier but you know yeah. she backs up and kind of beats me <laughs> uh i do notice that i think your play is a great idea and it's a great idea for a lot of reasons one you know you start the contact they are going to look close right on you they're not going to expect another player most likely especially if you haven't done it yet these type of plays generally work really well when they get executed properly now i think the second you see your reina not playing with you and not doing what you asked, probably you take this kill and leave, right? I don't think you need yeah. to stay here. Um, I think actually that you teleporting over into this cubby, maybe a little bit of a misplay, a really nice job getting one kill out of it at least. But I think maybe then you were trying to salvage what your Reyna was doing potentially. And you're like, oh, if she's on this side of this, you know, of long, maybe she'll be able to help me here or something. I can't really tell because she just starts running away. Um, yeah, solo maybe, queue. Maybe this is a maybe this is a sign of a lack of awareness in this situation then, because I actually hadn't noticed the Reina backed up at this point. The reason I went for that teleport right there is because I figured she was going to shoot eventually. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll I'll try to do something else and give her more time. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think maybe, that. Maybe, yeah, I, I think it's an I, oversight though. I just think that based off your Reina's position right here after this first kill you look where she is you realize she's not doing the play you're doing you've already got a pick um and it looks like she just she just used her leer this is the point where you got to do make your decision am i going all in or am i backing out and i think right here is where you probably want to back out of this um just based off of what's happening how she's not following through with the plan um but then you keep going forward now it's great that you do get a kill here obviously two for one is excellent give yourself a nice little advantage going you know for the rest of your team here but yeah, I think maybe they're living to fight another day. Could have been a slightly better play, a better play uh, you know, just in hindsight. I think a, a good thing to see there, too, is just my, my tunnel vision. Because the things that you're pointing out are things that I don't even notice in the moment. Like, I, I never even thought of it as an option. So I, think I always really say this. Like, five people doing something that maybe isn't the best strat is still better than everyone just playing by themselves and playing alone. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you yeah, guys... it's better to do the right thing as a team than a wrong thing alone. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or no, so I'll, opposite. No, the right thing alone, the, uh, the wrong thing as a team, and right thing alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that that's, you know, that's exactly how I look at it, and that's why, you know, I'm okay with calling strats. Not every strat I call is going to be great, but <laughs> at least we're working together, and generally, I think it goes well, you know? Yeah, um, and just staying positive. Yeah, absolutely. So, we finished the VOD. You do win 13-7, so... Not like a super close game, but you know, fairly close. And there was definitely some some rounds where some mistakes were made. Um, do you have any like any questions about anything we talked about before I like try to maybe sum it up a little bit and, and kind of say my, my main takeaways? Um, no, I think I got most of the questions <coughs> out beforehand. I'm glad uh, that you didn't comment on my worst play throughout that replay. I think you were talking when uh, when it happened, so you know that oh. was that was relieving. But, oh. uh, <laughs> Um, should it, I go it, back it was, and find it? Like it, it was, it was a mechanical error. I just, I just missed shots. It was really bad. Um, but you know, it, it, it happens. Uh, I don't have any specific issues other than what we've covered, but, okay. um, I guess my biggest question would be like, did you end up noticing any like habits particularly that you feel like, uh, probably need to be broken? Um, 
Um, because it, it's a lot easier when you look at like lower rank players because it's like, oh, yeah, like your crosshair placement or you crouch when you shoot. But like, I, I'm not sure, like, after I get to like a point where I feel like those are clean, I'm like, is there anything else I'm doing particularly wrong? Yeah, I think that you know, one thing I definitely want to point out about Omen is default smokes and map control. So, like, we were just we talked about with mid, um, smoking that off every round and making sure that. You know, they know the smokes are going to be there. You're shutting down control. You're you're denying um, map knowledge and positioning and all that kind of stuff. That way, when you guys want to do some aggressive push in mid, which I think is great on this map, the mid push is huge because a lot of times people will not leave someone mid and they'll all go their own way and you have a clear path through mid, right? So by not throwing that smoke consistently on defense, you kind of give, you gave yourself away on that play. Um, and, and also it, it, it really forces the enemy team to play super honest and leave someone in mid as well. There's, there's so many benefits to default smokes, you know, like, um, top C long on uh, Haven yeah. where a lot of times you'll see an omen smoke that, and, and they'll smoke it like every round because you get control of that, like, uh, that hallway, you get control of cubby, you get control of the orb and all that kind of stuff. You guys can you walk up if, if you want. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you get, you get control of all that stuff because the people on site, there's, there's a smoke right in their face, you know, and they don't know if you're going to flash out or what. So they always have to play honest and they always have to play around the chance that someone's in there. And it's the same with the smoke anywhere where if you smoke, um, in mid every round on icebox, they have to play honest around that and the fact someone could be in it someone could flash out they could be getting aggressive they could have you know taken this position or this or this or this so by not doing it you're you're unfortunately taking away that um that small advantage that you can give yourself in each round and then finally when you go to make a play in mid and you do your smoke they're like what the hell he's never done this before like you know be careful in mid and obviously they're pretty ready for you there you see what i'm saying with that specifically well, specifically on defense too, I, I bet there's probably a lot of times I'm sitting on two smokes in my inventory anyway that I'm just not using, you know, and like it doesn't make sense to just not throw a default smoke at that point. Like uh, I'm going to have one for retake anyway. Um, yeah. No, that, that's, that's a really good point. I've been playing a lot of Cypher and I'm really good at that on Cypher, like throwing those de or setting up defaults and stuff. But um, definitely, I guess on Omen, I, I probably let it slip a little bit. Yeah, that was, that was definitely one thing I noticed. You know, you talked a little about aiming. I don't think you have a big problem with crosshair replacement. I don't think that's that's a worry for me at all. And thank you, King. Thanks for being here. Yeah, see you, man. Thanks again. All right, peace. Cool chat. That was fun. That was fun.